I'm Josh McLean with David Walters Yachts. I'm down here today in beautiful St. Thomas, U.S. Virgin Islands. Gorgeous day, a little bit of breeze, about 30 knots gusting. I'm here with my buddy, Eric Holland, fellow broker of mine at Dave Walters Yachts. And we flew down for a very special listing, one of the cleanest, highest yachts we've ever encountered. And that's the Hylus 56 Serenity 2. Eric, can you tell us a little bit about it? Sure, thanks Josh, and welcome to St. Thomas, everybody. It's beautiful here today, a little bit of breeze, but we got a great boat. It's a 2018 House 56, it's home number 27. It's one of the last ones built by Queen Long Marine. And as you can see, she's in incredible condition. We've got a beautiful green all grip paint job, varnished teak tow rail, grab rails, well, the factory installed hard top bimini with solar panels. This boat's got a lot of systems down below we're going to show you today. A lot of great features. This is the best house 56 you're going to see out there. So let's hop aboard. And if you like what you see today, we'd appreciate it if you hit that subscribe button and uh, stay tuned for more yacht tour videos on our YouTube channel. Let's go. The Hylus 56 is a Herman Frere's design. It was introduced by Hylus Yachts in 2011 and is actually a redesign of the predecessor, the Hylus 54. So it's a completely redesigned deck mold for the 56. It's a little bit higher profile on the coach roof. Obviously the more modern style of the wraparound uh, windshield in a significantly larger cockpit. And it's some slight modifications to the transom to deliver some more interior volume. As we go through the boat, we'll, uh, we'll point out a couple other unique distinctions between the 56 and the 54. Looking at the deck of Serenity 2, there's a couple of uh, features here that are notable. Uh, first off, you have to admire just the beautiful sheer line of a Frere's design. Serenity 2 incorporates a high gloss varnished cap rail. Um, and you can also see along the hull sides here is a really significant um, rub rail. It's actually solid teak with a stainless striker. Um, adds a lot of protection when you're coming in on a breezy day like today. Uh, you'll also see one of the best features of Serenity 2 is this custom designed hardtop. Now this design here actually um, was sketched out by the, uh, by the captain, the crew and the owner, but finessed by Frères, which is important because it's difficult to capture the right lines on a hardtop to match the, in, the original designer's intent with the rest of the design and the aesthetics of the yacht. They nailed it on this and we'll show you a couple other features about that when we actually step aboard. Uh, you also see the fine stainless work all throughout the high stanchions. I mean, these are over 32 inches. You can see the substance in the, uh, in the backing and how they're mounted to the deck. Uh, on deck itself, it's a uh, light gray non-skid. It's a molded non-skid, so it really provides a lot of traction. Uh, it's beautifully finished and very durable. Um, on the foredeck here, we have varnished, uh, or varnished uh, handrails. And then as we move aft on top of the coach roof, uh, we have stainless as well. So a lot of grab rails throughout the deck, very easy, safe to move, maneuver about. So those are some of the uh, prominent exterior features and we'll step you aboard and show you some of the fine details. We're up here in the bow of Serenity 2. We're gonna take a look at some of the great architecture around here. First things first, up forward, we have a 55 kilogram stainless steel rock to anchor. It's hooked up to half inch chain that goes back to this Maxwell stainless steel windlass. This is a great set that has incredible holding power and longevity. Incorporated with this setup up here is we have a huge stainless steel striker plate that provides not only protection for all your ground tackle and your dock lines, but also has an aesthetically pleasing look that combines with the rest of the stainless steel a house well known for. Coming back a little bit, we have the anchor locker. Now in the anchor locker, this has two compartments. Up forward, we have the anchor chain itself. And then right here, we have another area that's just for storage of dock lines and fenders and all that sort of stuff. There's also freshwater and saltwater washdowns. We have locking dogs here. So when you're doing an offshore cruise, you can make this area watertight. We also have stainless steel struts that help hold the hatch open. And then coming back a little bit further, we have the sail locker. On the port side here, we'll see a cable master. Um, this is an added feature on this boat. So when you're nose into a dock, you don't have to have a huge power port stretching all over the deck. So this is nice and easy to control from the bow here and it's tucked in out of the way. So it still maintains a lot of the open storage space. 
you can see in here, it's pretty deep. We have the fortress anchor right here, the backup anchor. We have a hammock, and we also have the hatch down at the bottom here that gives you access to the valve thruster. We also have all the wiring pre-rigged for a stay sail furler. Now this boat is not fitted with a stay sail. It does have the removal air force stay right here uh, to help uh, with performance offshore to keep the rig from pumping. But uh, if you wanted to switch this out and put in an electric furler, all the hardware is in place to switching. And just a matter of installing the furler and running the wiring. So on the foredeck of the Hylus 56, you look back, you can see it's got this nice fairly flush and level platform here, which is a great lounge environment. Adds a lot of practical space that's uh, that's usable, whether it's uh, sundowners at, uh, at sunset or just uh, using this space as a lounge environment. But you'll see uh, we do have the Seattle gray non-skid. This is a molded non-skid material. It's really durable, feels great on the feet, and it's going to last for decades. So if you look at any Hylus, even a 30-year-old Hylus, you'll notice the non-skid. Perfect. On the foredeck, we do have these high varnished handrails, which adds a lot of structure and safety and confidence when you're moving about the yacht. Um, we can also look back and see these exquisite handcrafted manship hatches. Now these are made of 316 stainless steel. They have a smoked Lexan lens. Uh, so it's, it's totally opaque when you're looking down at deck level, but when you're down below, there's a ton of natural light. These are forward opening, so you get a lot of great airflow, especially on a day like today. Uh, just chills down the entire boat. You get a nice breeze right through. Um, so a lot of space up here on the foredeck. Nice, wide, open. Then as we move a little bit back on the, uh, on the side decks here, notice the height of these stanchions. Now these are one and a quarter inch, 316 stainless steel. A lot of substantial backing here with backing plates incorporated under the deck. But, uh, you know, these really, there's a lot of rigid, rigidity to these. So, again, you've got this great safety feature along the foredeck here. And you can't deny the beauty of this high gloss varnished cap rail here. Frere's does an absolute stunning shear line. This is a beautiful boat that's going to be recognized all the way across from the harbor. So we're here at the mast on Serenity 2. This is a Selden aluminum spar with an auger paint job. So it's got a beautiful look to it. And we have a number of upgrades that were done to this mast as well. We have the stainless steel Anderson winches. Another beautiful, pleasing look. That matches the rest of the Anderson winches that are back in the cockpit. We have the Antel Hallier tracks here with locks. This reduces the amount of extra uh, line you have up here on the rig when you're uh, not having to hoist a Genoa or the main. Uh, we have Doyle sails that were uh, provided by uh, Peter Grimm, who now works at North Sails, at our Hylus uh, preferred sailmaker. Uh, we have the boom here. It's aluminum boom, which uh, has an electric outhaul. We also have the manual outhaul backup, just in case we need to use that. And we also have a preventer built in. Up here on the coach roof, we're taking a look back here at this hardtop. As I mentioned, this hardtop was really the inspiration of the owner with the input from the crew but the fine details of the design and the aesthetics was really polished off by Frere's. And a hardtop's a really challenging thing to do to match the lines of the yacht without the designer's input. In addition to the great environment this provides inside the cockpit, it makes a real, real desirable platform here for mounting solar panels. Now, Serenity 2 is equipped with a full array of solar panels that makes the yacht nearly self-sufficient. So these power, these panels really provide the output to supplement the, uh, the lithium battery system, the auxiliary alternators, and of course, uh, the output from the generator, uh, which is a DC polar power. We'll explain a little bit more as we go a little bit further into the tour. But really self-sufficient yacht, exquisitely done here with this Frere's designed hardtop. Here we are midship on Serenity 2, and I'm going to point out a couple of really neat features here. Now first, we were just talking about this hardtop, and we, we looked at the, the top surface here with the solar panels, but now when you look at the actual support structure for it, you really get a sense for the rigidity of this design. Now these are 316 polished stainless steel struts here. The owner uh, opted for these additional handrails, which supplements the stainless steel handrails here on the coach roof. Um, moving aft. You see, we've got this great entry here into the cockpit environment. So it's just an easy step up, which is uh, sometimes one of the challenges with a center cockpit design. The movement from the side deck to the cockpit can be a little bit cumbersome. Not on the 56. You see, we've got these two nice low steps. It's an easy transition into the cockpit. Additionally, here on the midships, 
we have this great feature. So one of the best things I'd like to see on a Hylus is the stern rail extended up here to the midship. You take a look at integrates here with the stanchions, and then we've got these great side boarding ladders with these gates, both port and starboard. Now the design of this swim ladder here, or the side boarding ladder, uh, is pretty ingenious because you can actually keep it stowed while you're sailing. And it doesn't get in the way, it doesn't obstruct your, uh, your passage along the foredeck here. So it's just a great functional uh, setup here on the sides of, uh, uh, of the 56. Starting here on the uh, aft part of side deck, we're going to work our way around the transom and show you all the equipment that's on the back of the boat. So right here, we have the propane locker. This is a large locker that has two 20-pound aluminum cylinders along with uh, a double uh, regulator setup, and it's pre-plumbed up to the grill that's on the back of the boat. We have a life raft back here. This is certified through 2022. It's a quick release setup. It's right here on a cradle, so you release it, pops right over the side. Hopefully, they'll never have to use it. Under my feet here, we have one of the three lazarettes on the transom. This is a large compartment that's about five feet long, three feet deep, and has a ton of storage space for all your supplies. And this is duplicated on the port side. On the transom steps, there's another locker. It's a little bit smaller, but it has a lot of storage space for dinghy supplies or diving gear. All the way at the transom here in the corners, we have these beautiful added in stainless steel pulpit seats with teak slats. Underneath it, we have a Bose speaker system. And then we have a pop-up cleat for med mooring, or if you want to just tie for dinghy to the transom. And these fold away, and they're out of place when you're not using the uh, cleat. We've got the grill right here that I mentioned before. And then just like the anchor on the bow, we have this beautiful set of Simpson Warren stainless steel davits that cap off the transom. Attached to them is an EB 12 foot long aluminum four dinghy with a Yamaha 20 horsepower outboard. This is a great performance package and longevity, uh, durability, and it's got all the carrying space you're gonna need for supplies. Over on the port side aft, we have this stainless steel electronics mast. Now this has plenty of space up here for additional gear. If you want to add a satellite phone or you want to add a satellite TV antenna, it's got plenty of space and rigidity for that. You got the other lazarette under me I mentioned before. This is the outboard engine holder right here. As you see, it's in beautiful condition. It's stainless steel with the varnished T gloss face to it. And then we have our e perb right here in a quick release along with all your safety gear, SOS light, and uh, life ring buoy. One of the beach best features of this yacht, just like the Hiles 46 and the Hiles 54 is at 56, has this beautiful step down transom with these teak boards. It's really easy and secure to walk your way down. This will get you down to the dinghy when it's in the water. There's also a hideaway swim ladder in here. It's all stainless steel. Under this hatch right here that pops up, We've got a great compartment that is uh, great space for diving gear and uh, or any kind of dinghy supplies, anything you'll need on the beach. We also have a transom shower right here with uh, hot and cold. So when you're coming out of the water, you can hose off before you step on deck. At the helm of Serenity 2, I'm going to point out a couple of unique features um, particular to this yacht. Uh, but also highlight a couple of the key differences between the predecessors of the 56, 54, and, and uh, this design here. As mentioned previously, one of the biggest design improvements from the 54 to the 56 is here in the cockpit. You have a lot more beam, a lot more length, uh, a very commodious, but also nice and open cockpit environment. You're well protected from the environment with this wraparound uh, dodger. Certainly love the, the feature of the hard top. Um, you know, some may say on a boat this size, if you had the bimini top, it starts to look like a covered wagon. With this, it really improves the aesthetics, but also the functionality. Cockpit envi environment is bone dry. We do have these uh, Isinglass panels, which install in channels throughout the hard top and secure um, with lashings here to the combing. Uh, from behind the helm station here, we have full control over our electronic suite. Got this great Raymarine touchscreen uh, chart plotter here. Uh, autopilot controls. Um, we do have our, our, our Volvo engine controls here for our D3 150 Volvo engine. We have our Maxwell 560 chain counter and uh, windless controls. 
And this right here is one of the best features in terms of making this yacht easy to shorthand sail. Um, certainly when you're coming into the dock, this is one of the most unique 56s in that she is equipped with a retractable stern thruster and bow thruster with proportional thrust. So what's great about that proportional thrust system is when you're coming in on a nice breezy day, a lot of cross breeze here, coming into your slip, uh, you position the boat laterally in the slip and then you come over here, you set your dock assist and the boat will actually have your fenders out, it'll pin up against the pier and then you come out, you set your spring line and that's that. So this proportional thrust system is, is really slick, uh, makes this boat really easy to handle. No excuses for looking bad when you're coming into the dock, especially on the, even like on a day like today. So uh, we do have a carbon fiber helm, which is a nice touch. Um, it's, it feels good on the hands. Uh, you got great visibility off the forward side of the cockpit here and uh, unobstructed views port and starboard as well as aft. The ergonomics of the cockpit, you've got good easy access to your primaries and your secondaries. Again, these are Anderson. Your primaries are actually two speed controls and then you've got uh, electric, pretty much everything else. Secondaries, cockpit winch and main sheet as well. So a couple other features here in the cockpit. First I'll point out, we do have, um, like I said, nice push button controls. They are covered with these uh, uh, milled stainless steel um, protective covers here. That's great because some of those that have just that rubber, uh, rubber push button, that push button tends to corrode in the UV and does have a tendency to short out uh, with age. So these are really nice high-end push buttons here for our electric winches. Also, right here, uh, mid in the cockpit, we have our, uh, basically our lighting control panel here. We've got controls over all of our exterior, the bimini lights, the nav lights, the spreader lights, our barbecue light off the transom, which is great. Uh, and then we also have uh, additional windless controls up, down, and uh, as well as uh, um, blower controls for the engine compartment. Now this is a pretty, uh, pretty neat cockpit design here, uh, or cockpit table. Honestly, beautiful stainless steel work, high gloss varnish, uh, Pilus, two of their signatures of stainless steel and joinery work here. So this is a good design because you have two sort of configurations. You've got more of a cocktail configuration here with these two smaller wings, cup holders, or if you're going to do uh, like El Fresco style dining, this extends and then you have additional wings that fold out here really functional cockpit environment. So here in the forward part of cockpit, we have a number of systems uh, that assist with the main cell controls and with the electronics on the boat. So here on the starboard side, we have an electrically powered Anderson stainless steel winch, and this controls the outhaul and the preventer lines and the boom. We also have the main cell furling line, so you can be sitting right here, controlling both the button for the winch and the button for the main cell in out while well, keeping an eye on what the mainsail is doing. Right in front of us, we have the Rain Marine digital instrumentation. Now that's tied into all the sensors on the boat. So we have everything from depth, speed, wind, navigation, all tied in, as well as a chart plotter over here at touch screen. And we have an auto power control over there as well. So you can control everything from the navigation of the boat right here in the cockpit, nicely protected by the Dodger while underway. So we just took you through a tour up top and highlighted some of the really unique features um, that you see from the exterior. But down below is really where the unique, uh, unique features of this yacht come out. First off, uh, Serenity 2, as the name may imply, is the second pilot that this owner has had constructed. Uh, so a lot of what you find throughout the interior has been incorporated in the, uh, in the final design of the yacht having been through and had the experience of going through the process once before. So you'll notice a lot of aesthetic details, some interior uh, specifications, certainly some equipment that only a knowledgeable uh, owner uh, would incorporate. So first off, what you'll notice is throughout the interior, you're looking at solid teak joinery. Um, a unique feature here is the fact that the owner had selected a high gloss varnish for the interior. Uh, as opposed to the more common satin. I think it really pops, uh, adds certainly an element of elegance to the aesthetics of the yacht, uh, and it just has this rich and luxurious feeling to it. Um, you'll notice a lot of fine details such as the louvered cabinetry, the Burtlewood um, salon table with the, uh, with the inlay, beautiful solid teak and holly cabin sole, 
quartz countertops throughout, just a lot of really fine, luxurious touches um, that are uncommon in many yachts today. So we're gonna take you through, we're gonna start up at the bow and we'll work our way back through the main saloon, through the galley, the aft cabin, and we'll come up through the second passageway, which is another nice feature we'll, we'll show you in a minute. And then we'll conclude with the navigation station and show you the mechanicals of the yacht. So let's go take a look and head up forward. So we're gonna take a step through here, through the forward passageway to the forward VIP stateroom. And uh, this being a three cabin boat, you have your large aft master stateroom, center line island berth, forward you have your VIP stateroom, and then we have a guest cabin we'll show you in a minute. But this is truly a VIP stateroom. Uh, you can see it's uh, adorned with cabinetry, outboard above the berth. Uh, we've got tall hanging lockers, port and starboard, plenty of storage with some additional drawers here uh, or cupboards below the berth. Um, in addition to what you see, some of the mechanicals that you'll find under the forward berth uh, include the bow thruster units as well as the, um, um, the, the water maker components. Um, so as we mentioned, this boat has a really unique lithium battery system, which we'll show you some of those components here in a moment. But we have uh, our electric furling unit and our vertical Maxwell 24 volt windlass. Those both share these, uh, these two, um, they're actually 12 volt batteries wired together to form 24 volts. Uh, and those batteries are right under here, under the forward berth. There's actually pretty good access. This does flip up. This is a split mattress here, so it's easy to remove if you do need to access the, uh, the mechanicals up forward. Um, it's, a, it's, it's super easy to get to. Um, these mattresses as well, there is a, uh, a nice inner spring mattress with a foam topper. Super comfortable berth. Uh, you better be careful because if your guests get too comfortable, they're liable not to leave. <laughs> so this is the VIP cabin. We'll take a look uh, into the guest cabin with Eric. So we're up here in the forward passageway. Josh just showed you the forward cabin, and we're going to start up here on the starboard side. This is the forward head, and there are two accesses. This is from the passageway. There's also a private access from the forward guest stateroom. So stepping in here, you can see that this is a fairly large compartment. I have great headroom. I'm six foot three, so there's plenty of space in here, even for the tallest people. We have these beautiful Wally Stone countertops here, and we have these great chrome plated brass faucets and other accoutrements around. We have plenty of storage here behind these cabinets and the mirror. Uh, Jabsco quiet flush electric head. We have some valve access here. And you can see that the base pan here is fiberglass with drains as well. So this area, even if it does get wet, drains nicely into the shower sump. Over here, we can see the shower compartment that is uh, sealable off from the head itself. And we have a large amount of space. I can get in there completely. You can see how much space in here. I got pretty broad shoulders and I have plenty of room to move around and we also have more storage out here for cleaning supplies and we have a couple of opening ports as well as a deck hatch up here for more ventilation. Now coming back out of this compartment across the passageway we come to the third stateroom. Now this port side cabin is set up with two bunks. We have a single here and we have a larger single down below. Hanging locker that's also convertible to shelves, multiple drawers in the forward and the aft portions of the cabin, and we have much more storage here underneath the berth as well as cabinetry above. Um, we also have a couple fans and, of course, plenty of ventilation from the two port lights and a larger opening deck hatch than the head. Uh, and then we have a door here on a slider that's easy to close and seal this compartment off. So this is great for children or crew, uh, storage, or any kind of uh, guests you might have on board. And then coming back here, we can see the heel stepped seldom mast, and then we have another storage compartment here just behind for more supplies. Okay, so we're here in the forward cab. We're going to take a look at some of the mechanicals of the boat. One thing to notice is that these are very heavy duty floorboards. We can see here that these have these locking dogs on the bottom, so they slide in, and we have a locking pin on the other side. Um, now, th this is a requirement actually for uh, U.S. Sailing SER, uh, which uh, handles uh, offshore sailing and racing regulations. So you have to have locking floorboards. Hylos already meets that specification. We can see underneath here 
that uh, we have multiple pieces of equipment. Uh, a lot of the water maker assemblies you hear, uh, the spectral water maker, we had the pumps involved here. Uh, we have the valve system that allows you to uh, put uh, water that's freshly made into whatever tank is on board. We have the transducer access, and then we have multiple valves. And you can see the valves are nice, high-quality bronze. These are Groco valves, and they're all bonded into the bonding system on the boat. Moving out here a little bit, we can see one of the holding tanks aboard. This is a fiberglass holding tank. This is 30 gallons. And we can see here all the plumbing uh, and, of course, the, the sensor and that sort of thing are attached yeah. here. The nice thing with the fiberglass holding tank, it is good for the life of the boat. It's never going to deteriorate. It's never going to need replacement. Of course, you might need to replace the fittings once in a while and the hoses, but the tank itself is going to be good for life. So here in the forward passageway, we're right down at the base of the mast. Um, we can see here that the base of the mast itself is elevated uh, substantially above the uh, inner skin of the hull. It's about... Uh, I would say about 18 inches off the inner skin of the hull and supported on this very strong steel cross member here. So you don't get any kind of corrosion in the mass space, anything, any kind of water or moisture at the bottom part of the mass, it's just going to end up in the bilge. Right next to it, this is the 12 volt portion of the house battery bank. This is bank D right here. This is a lithium ion battery. A key thing to note about this 12 volt lithium ion battery is it does have an internal battery management system. So this is some very high-end software right here that's built into these lithium batteries to ensure that they're operating at their best potential. All right, we're going to take a look here through the uh, main saloon and highlight a couple of the uh, equipment uh, options that are installed here on Serenity 2. So let's start over here on the port side. First off, uh, right here under the settee and aft, we have a 5,000 watt Charles transformer. That's a great piece of equipment. Uh, because it gives you a lot of versatility when you're out cruising in locations that might have a, a variety of different uh, shore power connections. So whether it's U.S. or European shore power, you can plug in and, uh, and utilize uh, the, the marina facilities. Uh, forward to that, we have a 5,000 watt Victron Quattra uh, combination battery and inverter. Um, so that inverter system is a really critical component here of the yacht because it is a 24 volt uh, yacht. So uh, that inverter... Um, you know, really handles a lot of the load, especially on the AC side. So that's a good piece of equipment. It's oversized. It's at 5,000 watts. There has been additional uh, ventilation installed to handle the higher capacity of these systems. Uh, the forward end of the settee here, which first off, take a look at this nice wraparound settee. You can really get eight adults sitting around here very comfortably. Split between the lower portion of the forward section of the settee and the uh, the lower berth sort of storage compartment in the uh, port side guest cabin houses a 21,000 BTU DC air conditioning unit. Now the beauty of that system uh, paired with the lithium batteries uh, you can actually operate the air conditioning on this boat for about 10 hours uh, without any sort of external power or generator. Uh, it's a great system you can enjoy 10 hours of the AC without the the noise of the generator or the reliance upon shore power. So that's a really great feature of this yacht and, and fairly unique. So you don't see too many boats with 24 volt AC systems. On the starboard side, we have a full size settee. Uh, this is a good seven foot in length. Flanking each side of the settee here, we've got these large cabinets. And in the center is a pop up flat screen TV with the lift controls right here. Now, under the settee, we have two 24 volt lithium batteries. So the entire lithium system uh, has been designed by one company. So you don't have a mismatch of different components. All the engineering and the architecture work is already worked out by a single supplier. So there's a lot of uh, reliability in this system. And I'm gonna pull these up and just show you these batteries here. First, I want to point out the battery management system. The 12 volt batteries actually have an internal BMS system. The 24 volt batteries, which we can see part of one here, and we'll pull up this next segment and show you the rest. But this is an external BMS system. And there's several of these for the 24 volt battery systems uh, throughout the yacht. All right, so we're going to take you through some of the uh, features here in the galley. First off, you got to take notice of just how much preparation and counter space you have in the iOS 56. Uh, I really love the fact that you sort of have this inboard island style 
This is great for entertaining, setting out dishes. This is all quartz countertop. So you have a good deep single basin sink, stainless steel. Um, you do have it all plumbed in. Um, obviously you've got dedicated drinking water faucet here. This is a great system. You do have a manual fresh water pump here. Um, in terms of cold storage, you got a lot of options here. So we do have four of these Vertifrigo units. Now these are pull out stainless steel drawers. They're set up uh, two for refrigeration, two for freezers. And you do have um, temperature controls as well. So you can change up the temperatures and utilize, let's say three as a freezer, three as a refrigerator, one as a freezer if you so chose. Um, here we do have one of the best features here in the galley, a beverage chiller. Uh, now, the reason why this is such a nice feature to have, uh, just from an efficiency standpoint, you know, one of the most common things people go and they dive into refrigerators for is to grab bottles of water or beverages. So every time you open that unit, you're losing that cold air. Having just a dedicated unit for the beverage chiller really saves a lot of power uh, and makes it convenient as well. So uh, we've got a knife rack storage here, good deep cabinetry, all with louvered faces. I really like the fact they have this Valiant sliding integrated into the uh, trim pieces in the main saloon in the galley. Just adds some nice uh, aesthetic light. Um, good bank of cabinets here, drawers. These all pull out with a lot of depth. Moving aft here, we have a three burner Force 10 stove with oven and broiler. I mean, this is, it's just, it's in, perfect condition. So we do have the um, Samsung convection oven here. That's a good feature. Really saves you from having to use the, uh, the stove in the oven. Again, lots of storage. Pantry inboard here. This is actually really good and deep. And then again, you can see you've got plenty, plenty of uh, preparation room. Um, I do like the nice tall fiddles here as well. It really adds, uh, it makes it nice and easy everywhere you reach and everywhere you uh, you grab, you've got a handhold. So you can imagine being in the galley while the yacht's underway. You've always got a good sturdy handhold to grasp onto. So um, also critical that you have good ventilation in your galley. You do have opening port lights, both inboard into the cockpit and outward as well. So these are all high quality, um, Manship hatches. So it's a great feature to have, especially when you're cooking in the galley in the tropics. And then we'll come back into the uh, master stateroom. So the master stateroom, this is really, um, for many couples, this is your sanctuary. This is where you retreat to at the end of a long day, a long, hard passage, or just some time to unwind. So this, uh, the way this whole yacht is trimmed out is just stunning. So again, the high gloss interior, you've got the teak trim all around the ceiling here with the nice white headliner. Uh, I will point out the fact that this headliner, the way it's actually engineered is pretty nice because it's all secured with Velcro here, but it's, it's, it's very, very, um, it's like industrial Velcro. So you can actually pop these panels down to access these, uh, these lights or any of the interior wiring if you if you need to. Um, you can see here we've got a lot of good ventilation, rock, lots of opening port lights here. That's one of the best parts right here about this aft cabin. It's just the views you get from right here on this berth. You see you got a lot of height here to this uh, aft berth that gives you some good storage here underneath. Uh, you've got a small settee here and then you have a sort of a vanity style desktop here that opens up for the ladies. Uh, you do have his and hers hanging lockers, both port and starboard. And this is a deceptively large hanging locker here. So it's got a lot of depth to it. It's all cedar lined. And then the boat is set up here if you did choose to install a flat screen TV. All right, so continuing the tour now, we've gone to the back of the boat. Now we're gonna work our way back into the nav station area through the aft state room. So this is a ensuite head here and continuing in we got the similar look as the forward head a little bit smaller tower top but it's actually deeper so it's a little bit wider in here we have the same electric flush head by jabsco we have a great mirror set up here with uh, some lighting a vanity and we have some more storage all these cabinets open here for more access and there's plenty of ventilation from the port lights here going 
a little bit further forward we're here in a shower again uh, this shower is a little bit larger than the forward head because it's a little bit deeper and we also have back here more storage and then on the opposite side if i close this door here and this door here we have this mechanical access now this mechanical access here uh, provides us uh, a lot of access to uh, the solar panel controls, the backside of the generator, and some of the, um, uh, the vent loops here for the engine mechanical system. Now this is the optional pass-through here. You could have the nav station sealed off completely and have a complete desk here or this opening passage. So if you come down the companionway, you get your wet bow weather gear, it's easy to run right back here and dump it into the shower pan. And then up here we've got the nav station. So this is a forward-facing nav station. It's quite comfortable, actually. It's a little bit cozy. And uh, we have right in front of us, we see a large rain ring touchscreen chart plotter that's networked into the rest of the system aboard. We also have uh, the button controls here for this chart plotter. So if your hands are wet or if you're bouncing around, you can still control the screen here with these switches. Uh, we have a NMEA 2000 uh, network here. So you can see all the uh, tankage on board through this setup. So right here, we have our water tankage fuel tankage and then continuing over we have our Newport Spectra 1000 uh, water maker control panel we have the Vitron energy control panel uh, with a digital control readout for that as well for the uh, lithium-ion batteries fusion AM FM stereo with multiple zones VHF radio and there is a remote microphone up at the helm for this radio uh, we have a uh, warning panel here, so we have any kind of faults in the inverter charger system or any of the charging systems on board, we'll get a light here that'll let us know what the fault is, if it's a fuse or if it's some kind of other fault on board. And we also have here a uh, analog readout for the same tankage we're seeing up here that was digital. So we have two ways to get tankage information from board. Down on the left here, this is the 120 volt, uh, 240 volt shore power panel. And we can see um, currently all the buses that are active right now. We have our refrigeration over here, and we have things like our water heater and our outlets on the 110 side. Right behind me, this is the DC panel. We have our 24 volt system. We have our 12 volt system, and there's a converter from 24 volt to 12 volt as well. And then up here, we have these multiple gauges. Now these are for the multiple different battery banks aboard. So you can see uh, the capacities uh, currently um, of each of the different banks, like uh, bank D we mentioned before was the 12 volt engine bank. It's you can see it's at hundred um, percent. And then down beneath me here, we have our master disconnects uh, for things like the winches and the alternators uh, and the master disconnects for the house and the engine battery banks. So we're taking a look at the mechanicals on the Hiles 56. Now, if you've been aboard a Hiles before, you'll know there's typically fantastic access, and that is the same here as well. So we're going to open up one of the main access doors. This is right under the, under the companionway. This just slides open, and it has a gas assist and a security chain on it as well. We have right away, we see the twin engine fuel filters. Now, these are Raycor filters with a switching valve, so we can switch from one filter to the other for easy, quick change. And we also have this vacuum gauge here that tells us if there's a filter being clogged. And we have the sensors built in, and so if there's any kind of water that ends up in the fuel, we'll know about it, and the water will go off at the nav station. Taking a look inside here, we can see this is a Volvo D3 150. This is a fantastic engine. Uh, it's uh, very clean running. Uh, it's a quiet engine, and the parts are readily available uh, for this model. Uh, it's still an engine in common use, uh, actually being used on new build houses to this day. Uh, we have attached a very special 24-volt uh, alternator, and what makes it special is it's actually built into custom on the Volvo bracket. So this doesn't have an extra bracket that's in place uh, that uh, you know the belt may loosen up over time or something. This is actually built into the Volvo uh, auxiliary bracket itself. Uh, we have in here a multitude of other equipment. We have the backside of the manual bilge pump. We have uh, some of the associated plumbing here for the sink. We have the secondary water pump switch, AC and DC plugins. So if you're doing engine maintenance, you can easily plug in any kind of tools you have. And we have other access doors as well. A cool feature of these doors is that they're thick, 
they have sound insulation built into them, and we can take these doors off. All you gotta do is lift them up and they'll come right off so you have nice clean access to all the mechanical supplies. So from here, we have great access to the water strainer. We have oil dipstick. We have the fuel water separator that's built onto the engine. Access here to the after cooler and plenty of other uh, machinery here as well. Um, associated drain valves and that sort of thing. All right, so we're over here in the uh, starboard passageway right adjacent to the galley. Uh, we showed you the primary access here from underneath the uh, companionway and then Eric showed you the, uh, uh, the port side mechanical access. To starboard, again, we've got these nice, thick, solid teak doors. You can see the uh, good sound insulation here. And actually, the crew has added some additional uh, soundproofing here. So it really keeps the boat quiet. So here we actually have, uh, it's a good system here. So this is the, actually the oil change system here, which uh, you can plumb into the uh, oil reservoir here for the uh, D3150 engine. Transmission as well as our 6kW polar power DC generator. So that oil change system really makes it nice uh, Keeps your bilges clean and uh, avoids any spills and slop here when you're uh, doing your service work uh, We can see our transmission and right down here is our access to our dripless shaft seal And we do have another access point a little further aft in the galley This is going to be your primary service access for your polar power generator. What is nice about this setup is that this is also, this is a Volvo engine. Now this is a D130 Volvo engine, a pretty common engine actually in the maritime world. But the best part is because you have a Volvo primary engine, you're getting parts and components from a single supplier. So uh, just in terms of the maintenance program for the yacht, it really adds a lot of benefit to have only one supplier for your components. So good access here. We've got our oil filter. Here is our fuel strainer here, our, our um, intake strainer. We've got easy access to our elbows. And here we can also see this is our Jeffa um, solid torque tube steering system and our autopilot drive unit down here. All right, so a very key part of a Blue Water offshore boat is your bilge, your mechanical access, where all the dirty stuff's gonna end up on the boat. And as you can see here on the Hiles 56, we've got a huge bilge. This is very deep. This goes down all the way to a special keel sump that's built into the bottom of the hull here. So we have all the water or any kind of moisture that collects will be right here in this sump area. And we have a total of three pumps. We have two electric and one manual pump plus a high water alarm. So you're always gonna be able to get the water out of the boat. You can see the keel bolts. Uh, these are stainless steel keel bolts and a lead keel, so there's not going to be any kind of corrosion. You can see if you normally have, like, have a you know a, uh, a cast iron keel with carbon steel bolts, they'll corrode very quickly. These aren't going to corrode on you. They're going to look pristine for a very, very long time. We can see all the mechanical stuff is mounted way above the bottom of the bilge. So for instance, here we have bilge pump. We have the air conditioning pump with its strainer and through hall at the back in the engine compartment. And then up here... We have our freshwater pumps, pump one and the backup pump, and then we have our gray water tank. And the gray water tank is very important because if you're in some uh, regions or countries that don't allow you to pump out gray water directly, it can go in this container and then you can pump it out there. And now another key part, this is a trademarkable thing that Hiles does, is the dust pan. It sits right here in the hatch and this little gray comes over it. So you're coming down the steps and you're tracking out a little bit of dirt from outside, it falls in this pan. It's also nice and easy to be able to sweep stuff around and dump it outside later. I really want to thank you for joining us today on our tour of Serenity 2. As I mentioned, this is a really special yacht. One owner, always captain and crew kept since the beginning. Uh, owned by a highly knowledgeable and experienced yachtsman. Second new construction, Hylas equipped to the teeth, set up for cruising, lightly used, and in, I mean, truthfully, like new condition. So um, if you have any questions about Serenity 2, you can always reach me. And again, my name is Josh McLean. My cell phone number is 616-204-9658. You can also find David Walters Yachts online at www.davidwaltersyachts.com. I do want to thank Eric today for coming through and uh, helping me today with this uh, yacht tour. Incredibly knowledgeable uh, yacht broker, Eric. 
if folks want to get in touch with you, how can they do so? Yeah, thanks, Josh, and thanks everyone for joining us today in St. Thomas. Uh, my name again is Eric Collins, and I can be reached at 410-279-3027. And if you enjoyed the video, please hit subscribe today and check us out on Instagram as well. And if you have any questions, just give us a call, or if you'd like to see Serenity 2 in person, we're happy to come back down to St. Thomas and share it to you right here anytime.